August 2013, Hawaii. Astronomers at the Pan-STAR Survey Telescope spot an intriguing object between Jupiter and Mars. It defies initial attempts at identification, but they name it Asteroid P5. What's particularly unusual about this asteroid is that it seems to have several cometary tails. Astronomers are perplexed by what they see. A month later, astronomers track the object using NASA's super powerful Hubble telescope. What they see blows their minds. Not only are there just a few tails, there are actually six distinct tails emanating from the nucleus of the asteroid. Every time they look at it, it looks different. One tail on an asteroid is unusual. Six tails is completely unheard of. These tails keep appearing, disappearing, shifting direction. Something else is going on here. Asteroids shouldn't have a tail, let alone six of them. As scientists try to solve the mystery, speculation mounts. One theory is that the tails might be the debris caused by a space collision. But the data doesn't add up. Collision doesn't make any sense in this particular situation. This collision won't create six tails. We're not looking at a collision here, as that would be a one-off event. Here we see tails evolving over time, over the course of several months. So a different mechanism is involved. But if they're not caused by a collision, what could explain an asteroid with six tails? To some, these look like traces of attitude control thrusters. Attitude jets are pulses of thrust that are used to control the motion of a spacecraft. Although the idea comes from science fiction, it makes good scientific sense. An asteroid is pretty much a perfect ready-made shell for a spacecraft. Aerodynamics don't matter when you're traveling through the vacuum of space, and the rock provides an excellent structure and excellent protection against radiation. One of the difficulties of space travel is galactocosmic rays. They can actually kill you, for instance. So the advantage of being just a few foot below an asteroid surface is that you're actually shielded from these high-energy galactic cosmic rays. But astronomers think a natural explanation for the strange phenomenon is more likely. Looks like what we're seeing with P5 is it's an object that was spun up by this uh, effect of the sun's radiation and to the point where it was spinning so fast that the material started to leave the surface. So when you look at it one day, its tail orientation is in one direction. You look at it another day, well, the thing's been spinning around multiple times since last time you looked, and now stuff's coming off of it in a different way. So it's really a spinning problem, not a, not a steering problem. Some asteroids may just fall apart at these high spin rates, but this one is so tough and so rocky and so hard that it actually just stays together. That unstable material avalanches down from the peaks into the troughs and is ejected into space as a fine stream of material that looks like a tail. Even if P5 is just an asteroid, the idea of converting space rocks into spacecraft is not as far-fetched as it sounds. NASA has plans to turn this science fiction into fact sometime after 2020. NASA would like to um, take asteroids out of their current orbits and put them into slightly different orbits, more useful for human exploration. Asteroids would make great space vehicles. You just land on them and you go where they're going. This is, in fact, part of human exploration of space. This is our plan, is to land on asteroids and have them take us where they're going. Within the archives of NASA's unexplained files, most strange sightings are one-off events that leave no trace behind. NASA scientists must be prepared to grapple with phenomena that no human has ever encountered. I think we're constantly seeing things that we say, oh, I haven't seen that before, what's that? What's going on there? In 2012, the space agency's planet hunting team spots something that baffles even them. NASA's Kepler telescope finds two planets orbiting a star in the distant Cygnus constellation. 
The data from the telescope suggests they are doing something unnatural. Both planets have been pulled out of the equatorial plane. The star is spinning like this, and the planets are going around like that. It's all very peculiar. Planets orbit around the equator of their star because that's where its powerful gravitational grip and rotational force combine to pull together dust and gas, making new worlds. But this star's two companions seem to defy the laws of physics. Kepler-56 is the first extrasolar planetary system discovered where the plane of the planetary system is very different from the rotation axis of the star. This observation goes against everything we know about how planetary systems are formed. And whatever strange force is at work here, it's affecting more than one world. One planet orbiting out of the equatorial plane of the system is a bit weird. Two planets is insane. How do you explain planets that are orbiting the wrong way? You have to wonder, are we looking at something else besides conventional planets? Are they really planets? Are they artificial? If these bodies were artificial, they'd have to be bigger even than the fearsome Death Stars of Star Wars. The engineering involved would be far beyond human technology. But planetary orbits such as these do not happen when planets form naturally. Something very strange must have happened to these two planets in order to have them both misaligned the same amount from the equatorial plane. That's the hard part to explain. It needs something with some unholy power to shift it out of an equatorial orbit. The question is, what could create such a force? As an alternative to the Death Star hypothesis, planetary scientists have summoned an invisible planet. And we speculated that there was this additional body further out that was much larger. But we don't know that it is there yet. We don't know what it is or how far away it is. Just that we have a hint that this extra body further out might be true. This invisible planet, labeled Kepler 56d, would have to be huge, three to four times the mass of Jupiter capable of exerting such an immense gravitational pull that it could compete with the gravity of its own star. Whatever the two rogue objects are, they are doomed. In 130 million years, the star will expand, consuming them both. The dark world we call 56D will be the only survivor of the apocalypse. <laughs>